This is an instruction video for the Lucy Maternal and Neonatal Birthing Simulators. We will be covering the basic, complete, and advanced simulators. The quality and simple design make this simulator easy to use and care for while teaching a variety of patient care techniques. Lucy is a lightweight, full body female simulator that is 66 inches or 167 centimeters long and weighs 35 pounds or 16 kilograms. She is simple to transport in pre-hospital scenario training, as well as a superior range of motion with fully articulated joints and includes bony landmarks, including ischial spines. Lucy's appearance can be changed quickly with multiple hair and eye color combinations included. Lucy also comes included with a five-year manufacturer's warranty. The functions and features for all available Lucy options include airway management, an amniotic sac, articulating arms and legs, an articulating baby, birthing positions, breech deliveries, a manual carotid pulse, six stages of cervical dilatation, cesarean section delivery, CPR, episiotomy repair, deliveries of vaginal cesarean forceps assisted and vacuum assisted, fetal palpation, abdominal and Leopold's maneuvers, fetal suction, fundal massage, intramus intramuscular injection sites on the maternal only, manual birthing maneuvers, membrane rupture, oral and nasal care, patient positioning and transfer techniques, placenta previa, postpartum care, postpartum hemorrhage care, scalp electrode placement, shoulder dystocia maneuvers, umbilical cord prolapse, and umbilical cord clamping and cutting. Lucy has a superior range of motion in the shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, neck, hips, knees, ankles, and toes. Included with the basic Lucy are the torso, head, three wigs that include black, blonde, and brown, three sets of eyes, that include brown, blue, and green. Articulating legs, the right and the left. Articulating arms that include the right and the left. Normal abdominal skin. chest skin, cesarean abdominal skin, the fundus, prenatal perineal skin, episiotomy perineal skin, and the birthing perineal skin. Six stages of services. The foam CPR chest with a lung bag. Perineal skin foam stabilizer pad. The pelvic block. Positioning bag. Inflation tubing with squeeze bulb. The placenta with a long umbilical cord. 
three short umbilical cords with clamp. Abdominal pad. Hospital gown. Simulated amniotic sacs, a roll of 50. An articulating fetus. And also included is a five-year warranty and instruction manual. The complete Lucy includes all of the same features as the basic Lucy, in addition to a newborn nursing skills and ALS simulator, which is a full term newborn measuring 19 inches from heel to crown. It has airway, breathing and ventilation features, birth anomalies, CPR, gastrointestinal features, umbilicus care, venous access, and heel stick. The Complete Lucy also includes a set of life form clots and hemorrhages, true clot clotting blood product, which is highly realistic simulated clotting blood for use in hemorrhage control of training. This also includes a large soft carry bag system. The advanced Lucy includes all of the same features of the basic and complete Lucy models as well as a blood pressure arm, an IV arm, and a micro preemie simulator, which is a micro preemie that is 25 weeks neonate and includes birth defects, bilateral and unilateral chest rise, cannulating umbilicus, chest tube placement, CPR, GI care, intubation, IV access, removable ostomy site, and replaceable airway. This system includes a large and small soft carry bag system. Included with the advanced Lucy are two infant simulators, the newborn nursing skills and the ALS simulator, and the micro preemie simulator. The newborn nursing skills and ALS simulator replicates a full term infant, and the micro preemie represents a 25 week old neonate. Practice all of the essential neonatal care. Features include airway, breathing, ventilation, birth anomalies, including neural tube defect and aqua seal, CPR with realistic chest compressions, gastrointestinal will accept an OG and NG2, a patent umbilicus with a reservoir, and venous access in the full term newborn which includes access to the right hand and foot. The IV site on the micro preemie are four molded sites typically used for peripheral IV access. The right scalp, scalp, right foot, left arm, and left hand. All four will accept an infusion device, but none of these sites are functional. The components included with each infant are replaceable airways, 
replaceable lungs, a patent umbilicus, an opera seal, and neural tube reflex. To install the lungs and airway on both, thoroughly lubricate all outside surfaces. And that includes around the airway and around the baby's mouth. Gently insert your lubricated finger into the airway over the tongue and epiglottis. Push the tube end of the airway into the baby's mouth. Slide the airway down into the head. Make sure to free the baby's lips as, this, as it slides into place. Work your fingers around the inside of the mouth to be sure the airway is correctly seated. Check that the tubing section of the airway is projecting into the chest cavity. Lubricate the tubing section of the airway and place the long plate ensuring the tube from the airway inserts into the hole on top. To apply the IV hand and foot skin, you'll generously powder the inside of the hand skin. I carefully pull the skin over the hand taking care not to dislodge the vein tube. You'll follow the same procedure for the foot. The umbilical scum functions like a stopper, plugging into a small reservoir within the abdomen. The apple seal on a full-term infant can be inserted over the patent umbilical. In the microfreamy, you will easily remove the umbilical cord and insert the umbilical seal. For GI, the left nostril will accept an eight French NG tube that will pass into a small tube embedded in the chest cavity of the baby. The microfreamy will accept a five French NG tube. And then the neural tube defect can be inserted on the infant's lower backs. Add either of these simple simulators to any birthing scenario and follow institutional procedures for every simulation. In closing, thank you for taking the time to learn our Lucy maternal and neonatal birthing simulators. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your sales director or customer service, and you can always visit our website, nascahealthcare.com, and search for Lucy. All models are packaged with some light assembly required. This is to ensure that damage does not occur during shipping. To attach the arms, push the arm toward the shoulder of the mannequin with the keyhole aligned. And with the keyholes aligned, bring the arm to a normal position. These instructions may be followed to install both the plain arms included with a basic, complete, or advanced Lucy, and the blood pressure and IV arms that are included with the advanced version only. To prepare the injectable training arm for use with Lucy, prepare the synthetic blood as instructed in the instruction manual. Before filling the IV bag, be sure the clamp on the IV tubing is closed. 
This will be IV bag A. Fill 500 cc's maximum. Be sure to hang IV bag A no more than 18 inches or 45.72 centimeters above the level of the arm. Attach the tubing on IV bag A to one of the shoulder tubes. Since this is a single tube loop system, it does not matter which tube you use. This will be now the inlet tube. Use the second shoulder tube for the draining. This will be the outlet tube. With the outlet shoulder tube attached to the second IV bag, we will call this IV bag B, make sure the clamp is on the drain tube is open. To flush the vascular system with a synthetic blood, slowly open clamp A on IV bag A. Allow the system to flush with synthetic blood until the air bubbles are no longer seen passing through the outlet shoulder tubing into the IV bag B. Turn the arm over to force any remaining air bubbles out of the system. Close the clamp on the outlet shoulder tube and if using an IV bag, close off the blood outlet. The system is now filled and pressurized. Be sure to leave the clamp on IV bag A open. The arm is ready to practice drawing blood. Synthetic blood can be drawn anywhere along the pathway of the vein. The left blood pressure simulator arm has digitally recorded blood pressure sounds that can be varied by pulse rate and volume. The different crop cough phases can be identified and an optional oscillatory gap can be selected. A palpable radial pulse is present in the wrist. To set up the blood pressure simulator arm included with the advanced Lucy maternal simulator, install the batteries in the back of the blood pressure control unit. Install six AA batteries as indicated by the orientation diagram embossed in the bottom of the bracket. After the batteries have been properly installed, reassemble the electronic control unit by sliding the compartment closed. Turn on the electronic control unit by pressing the power button on the top right of the unit. Observe the display and verify that a readable display is present. Please note, the control box has a battery saving feature that will turn the unit off after approximately eight to 10 minutes of no keys are used within the period of time. To connect the arm electronic control unit and blood pressure cuff, locate the cable that extends from the blood pressure simulator arm and plug into the top of the electronic control unit using the jack labeled ARM or arm. Locate the end of the pressure line attached to the blood pressure cuff that is assembled with a male lure fitting. Attach this end of the pressure line to the female lure fitting assembled at the top of the electronic control unit marked cup. At this point, the blood pressure simulator is ready for use. The unit has been factory calibrated for use with accessories included. No further calibration adjustments are necessary at this time. If the unit is to be used with a blood pressure cup other than the one supplied or when recalibration is necessary, See the section titled Calibration Procedures in the Instruction Manual. To operate the electronic control unit function for the blood pressure arm, you will see that under the display window, there are three buttons titled Menu, Gap, and Calibrate. To set the systolic and diastolic pressure, press the menu key once. The set systolic pressure menu will display the electronic control unit window. Use the up or down arrow keys located to the right of the menu button to adjust the systolic pressure. 
press the menu key a second time. The set diastolic pressure menu will display the electronic control unit window. Use the up or down arrow keys located to the right of the menu button to adjust the diastolic pressure. The systolic and diastolic pressures can be set anywhere from 0 to 300 millimeters. To set the heart rate, press the menu key a third time. The set heart rate menu will display in the electronic control unit window. Use the up or down keys located to the right of the menu button to adjust the heart rate. The heart rate can be set from zero to 300 beats per minute. To set the palpable pulse, it is found in a radial location. Palpations can be felt upon startup of the unit or after blood pressure and heart rate settings have been made. The palpable pulse is delicate and should be palpated lightly. Pressing too hard will damage the pulse feature. To set the pulse, press the menu key a fourth time. The set palpation menu will display in the electronic control unit window. Pulse on is defaulted. Use the down arrow key to the right of the menu key to set palpation to pulseless. The palpation can be set either on or pulseless. When the pulseless setting is used, the diastolic and systolic pressures will automatically be set to zero. Use the up arrow key to the right of the menu key to set palpation as pulse on. Note that during an actual blood pressure reading, the palpable pulse will automatically turn off when the cuff inflated and surpasses the systolic set point. It will turn on when the cuff is deflated to 20 below the diastolic set point. This function allows students to clearly hear correct cuff sounds. To set the oscillatory gap, locate the gap key to the right of the menu key. Press the gap key to set the function on Y equals yes or N equals no. When the key is pressed, a message will briefly appear on the oscillatory gap is enabled or disabled. The main display window will show A gap Y or on or A gap N or off. To set the volume, the arrow keys are controlled volume of the sounds present in the arm. From the main menu, press the up arrow key to increase the volume or press the down arrow key to decrease the volume. The volume levels can be adjusted from level one, the lowest volume, to level seven, the highest volume. To change the eye color on Lucy, Pry the eye out from the upper lid using a paper clip or similar object, such as a small blood mixing spoon provided with the micro in the advanced Lucy. Never use a sharp or pointed tool. Pull the eye free from the socket. Add a small amount of the provided lubricant included to, and pad your finger with the lubricant. Using a lubricated finger, apply the lubricant to the eye socket. Push the new eye under the lower lid and fit the eye into the socket. Your chest and lung bag connect to the trachea tubing with the elbow connector extending into the torso from the attached head. To connect the airway and install the foam CPR chest, slide the lung bag in the pocket of the foam CPR chest. Position the lung bag inside the chest so that the port on the lung bag aligns with the hole inside the chest. The port fits through the foam CPR chest to the back. Insert the trachea tube with the elbow connector 
into the hole at the top of the foam CPR chest. And finally, connect the trachea tube with the elbow connector to the lung bag port through the back of the foam CPR chest. To set up your simulator for Leopold maneuvers, install the fetus and prepare for delivery simulation. Remove the pelvic block. Attach the positioning bag to the upper port on the inside of the torso. Place the pelvic block into the torso and lay the positioning bag lengthwise over the block. Attach the inflation tubing with a squeeze bulb to the upper side port on the outside of the torso. Position the articulating fetus as desired. Lay the abdominal pad over the fetus with the narrow end passing beneath the pubic bone and the edges tucked in around the sides. Attach the normal abdominal skin to the torso. Close the valve on the air pump and inflate the bag as needed to adjust the fetal position within the abdomen. Remember, do not overinflate. The bag can be deflated slightly to enable articulating fetus to drop beneath the pubic bone. To set up cervical dilation and effacement, Select the desired cervix module and plug it into the receptacle in the pelvic block. Place the pelvic block in the torso. Position the genital foam stabilizer pad in a U shape between the block and the skin. This will prevent excessive movement of the skin during examination. To simulate shoulder dystocia, lay the positioning bag crosswise in the lower torso and connect the tubing to the lower side port. Attach the inflation tubing with squeeze bulb to the lower part on the outside of the torso. Position the fetus. Inflate the bag slightly. Raising the fetus to the desired position. After the appropriate actions have been practiced, open the valve on a squeeze ball to fully deflate positioning bag and complete the birth process. To set up for a vaginal delivery, remove the pelvic block and perineal skin foam stabilizer pad from the torso and install the perineal birthing skin. Attach the placenta to the metal plate on the abdominal wall of the torso. Attach the long umbilical cord to the placenta.
Connect a short umbilical cord for clamping and cutting to the long one. Connect the remaining end of the umbilical cord to the fetus. Position the articulating fetus in the abdomen. The abdominal skin may be installed or left off so the instructor has better access to manipulate the fetus. The fetus may be placed in an included clear plastic bag to simulate the amniotic sac. To simulate a cesarean suction, it is important to note not to use the abdominal pad in this scenario. Remove the perineal skin foam stabilizer pad and place the pelvic block in the abdomen. Position the articulating fetus on the pelvic block as desired. You may connect the umbilical cord sections and placenta to the fetus if desired. Please note, the placenta cannot be attached to the abdomen with the pelvic block in place. Simply lay it elsewhere within the abdomen. The normal abdominal skin may be left off or used with a lower section folded back. Either perineal skin may be used, the prenatal or birthing. Leave the upper section of the selected perineal skin unbuttoned to accommodate the cesarean skin. Install the cesarean abdominal skin on the torso. The performed incision is specially reinforced and may be closed as desired. Also, please note that repeated suturing and or stapling will eventually damage the skin and the skin will need to be replaced. For postpartum care, episiotomy, replace the perineal birthing skin with the episiotomy skin. Place the pelvic block into the torso and install the perineal skin foam stabilizer pad. The skin will withstand several suture opportunities. The sutures may be left in place for nursing practice. To extend the life of the skin, use a small needle and avoid pulling the sutures too tight. Simulated blood may be added for greater realism. For postpartum care, bundle assessment and massage, attach the fundus tubing to the upper side port and attach the inflation tubing with squeeze bulb to the outer port. Place the pelvic block into the torso. Lay the abdominal pad over the abdomen with the tapered end toward the chest. Tuck the rest of the pad loosely into the pelvis around the block. Attach the normal abdominal skin onto the torso and the inflation tubing to the port on the outside. Adding three to five pumps of air will increase the firmness. Opening the air valve completely will give the fungus a soft or boggy feel. Closing the valve will result in a firmer uterus. Please avoid overinflating the fungus as this will damage the simulator. Clot 
Plots and hemorrhages can be used with multiple scenarios to add realism without the mess of moulage. Durable material will allow for multiple uses with proper care as described in the instruction manual. The small perineal hemorrhage is approximately 145 milliliters and is 14.25 inches long by four inches wide and 0.25 inches high. The large hemorrhage blood pool is approximately 340 milliliters, 12.75 inches wide by 10.5 inches long and 0.25 inches high. The small blood clot is approximately 66 milliliters, is 3.29 inches long, 4.25 inches wide, and 0.86 inches high. The medium blood clot is approximately 107 milliliters, is 3.5 inches long, 4.25 inches wide, and 1.09 inches high. The large blood clot is approximately 193 milliliters, is five inches long by five inches wide, by 1.38 inches high. To draw blood samples on Lucy, follow the procedure for setting up your IV arm to draw blood using IV bag B as your brain bag. Once the arm is pressurized and full of blood, open clamp on bag A. Cleanse the IV site with distilled water and insert IV wheel or butterfly. A realistic flashback will be evidenced with proper insertion. Lucy also has intravenous infusion capabilities. Follow the detailed instructions provided in the instruction manual for IV infusions on your Lucy. Perform a blood pressure on Lucy. Connect the arm electronic control box and blood pressure pump following the instruction manual. Please note we are using an external speaker for demonstration purposes. The speaker is not included. Set the systolic and diastolic pressure to the desired levels. Select the oscillatory gap. Select the heart rate to the desired setting. It is important to note the electronic control unit will default to the last levels previously set. It is important through up to go through all menus and program the electronic control unit with each training session as desired. Place the stethoscope on the arm. Now Lucy is ready for blood pressure simulation. All versions of Lucy have an airway that will allow intubation. National Healthcare recommends the use of a 7.5 to 8 millimeter endotracheal tube for oral intubation and 7.5 millimeter or smaller for nasal intubation. Determine the method of intubation and select the appropriate size intubation appliance. Generously lubricate the airway and appliance. Intubate the mannequin. And 
visualize chest rise and fall with ventilation. Please ensure the cup is properly deflated before removing the appliance, or you may cause damage to the airway. General use instructions for airway management on Lucy include the use of the bag valve mask. All versions of Lucy can be used for ventilation and bag valve mask practice. Ensure the lung bag is connected to the airway as instructed earlier. Using a standard size adult bag valve mask, ensure the proper seal is made on the face of the mannequin and depress air. Visualize a chest rise and fall with ventilation. CPR chest compressions can also be performed on Lucy. All versions have a manual parotid pulse feature as well. By squeezing the squeeze ball extending from the neck, to palpate the manual parotid pulse. To set up cervical dilation and effacement, select the desired cervix module and plug it into the receptacle in the pelvic block. Place the pelvic block in the torso. Position the genital foam stabilizer pad in a U shape between the block and the skin. This will prevent excessive movement of the skin during examination. Attach the prenatal perineal skin. For greater realism, the examination may be conducted with the abdominal pad and normal abdominal skin installed. However, if you will be using multiple service modules, it may be more convenient to leave the torso open. If you wish to incorporate lead pull maneuvers into the scenario, you can access the interior of the simulator by detaching the upper portion of the perineal skin and installing the modules from below. With the detail of each cervical stage, cervical dilation examination can easily be taught in a simulation setting and for institutional procedures for checking cervical dilation. To simulate a vaginal delivery, follow the instruction manual for proper steps to set up Lucy. Blood and cold cream may be applied to the fetus to add realism. Be sure to generously lubricate the vagina and fetus for easy removal. And follow all institutional procedures for vaginal deliveries. Now we will demonstrate the vaginal delivery.
To simulate a cesarean section, follow the instruction manual for proper steps to set up Lucy. Blood and cold cream may be applied to the fetus to add realism. Be sure to generously lubricate the fetus for easy removal and follow all institutional procedures for a cesarean section simulation. Now we will watch a simulation on a cesarean section. To assess the fundus, add air to desired field and follow institutional procedures for fundal assessment and massage. For postpartum blood clot and hemorrhage assessment, add any combination of blood clot, hemorrhages, or coagulant blood. Follow institutional procedures for blood clot assessment and hemorrhage control. 